Good morning, happy Tuesday everyone. Welcome back to the build. Yeah, yesterday we got those two trusses up there. Today we're gonna to continue on with uh, making a building, I guess. We have uh, Jack and Eric here again today helping us. Uh, they are gonna be getting the last little bit of truss prep done. And Donovan and I are gonna be over here getting this all set. So we're gonna get some bracing in here, get this corner or these two corners all squared up and get this all exactly perfect and then we can um, kind of move on from there. We're trying to get for sure this complete bay finished and then we can start working down the line. Uh, well, while we have people here, it's obviously easier or more, it's a better use of labor to have people helping us set the trusses and not necessarily setting all the purlins because that does take a good amount of time. But once you have a few in there, the rest of them drop in so we can come back and do the other ones later or not or whatever. <laughs> so we have four trusses that need their purlin layouts done. So I'm gonna run through that real quick because the guys are already catching up with all the, uh, the hangers. Okay, give or take an eight, depending on what part you measure. All right. Which way will we lay these out? To the left or the right uh, of the axe? It's on the high side. Okay. <laughs> Mobile toolbox. Grass is wet today. Same thing on the other side. All right, we're gonna hop over here now and start working on getting this prepped and ready to go. So we have some X bracing to go into the corners and we're gonna put the uh, grade board in as well. And we got the purlins. So a little bit of hopping around over here to get this all uh, finished up. Hey. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye again. South is that way. You're going the wrong way. You wanna go that way. That's West. Why you West, young bird? <laughs> So we have all our braces cut for our X bracing and we're installing the grade board which goes along the bottom. It's a lower girt. It's a two by eight pressure treated. We need that installed because uh, the brace is attached to the grade board. So that has to go in first and then the braces can go in. Get butter in, Jack. That's it. We're still in sinking mode right now. But that looks pretty good. It's off like an eighth of an inch. I found it tough to go. We could take that two by off that's there. Gotcha. You know what is the toenail of this thing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Start here and get set. And then I also need a door. Yeah.
This is heavy. This side. Got that, you can help. You got it? You got it, Eric? You, you... I ain't got it either. You want to try and get it? You can try, but I can't do it. I can't hold it out there. You have enough nails? Yeah. Oh, and it's like left-handed too? Yeah. Everything's against you. Are you good? So that takes care of one section of purlins up and around and all the way back down again. Uh, Jack's been working on the window boxes for all the windows that are going to go into the sidewall. So those are ready for that. And Donovan is getting ready to fly the next truss in. <laughs> and uh, being up in the air with that nail gun is, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to have some like Popeye arms after this. Stretching. Need more stretching. All right, here comes the truss. And a bit of lawn. I want to get some sod dumped on me. I'm just hanging out on the platform. I'm loitering right now. I'm loitering, yeah. yeah. Wait for my turn. Wait, I'm loitering on the platform. Isn't that a crime? Not today.
Just stop falling down. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Three more to go after this one. It's gonna start feeling like a building pretty soon. Time for some nails. Other nails. Finger nails. Can't quite get to the pearl that I was doing before, so we're gonna do this one here instead.
Hello. I got it. Any more? No, just this. That should be enough for now. I think. You guys are done already? You're getting too fast at this. Way too fast. I don't know how this is still working. 25 foot drop. Oh, I lost my filter for it. That's a long way. But check this out. This is what it's gonna be like in here. Completely open all the way to the roof line.
Last intermediate truss. Okay, we got all, well, what, one end truss and seven of these mid-span trusses in. We're going to work on squaring the whole building up, getting it dialed in a little more. Eric and I are going to go start setting purlins. I don't know how much this thing I'm going to show because it's, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of purlins. It's a lot of nails. But it's starting to look like an actual building now, so that's super exciting. We're just uh, bracing up the building here for the night. We got a couple of bays of purlins installed, or I guess one full bay and one partial bay of purlins installed before we're calling it a day here. Everything is uh, chained and cross braced here through till tomorrow. But as we come in here, oh man, it's starting to feel like an actual space and an actual like building. Just being up here, or just being in here and just looking up and imagining being in here with the space completed. It's uh, I, it's it's starting to come together and I'm, I'm starting to have feelings. Here's a little view from the side here. Let's go and look at the end. Well, there is the, uh, the building as it stands now. It's looking, uh, it's looking like a building. Man, it really takes shape really quickly. So one of the biggest questions on the last video, which I was totally expecting, has to do with the trusses. And did I consider storage trusses or why didn't I do storage trusses? So let's talk a little bit about that and why the heck that's all just wasted space. Or is it? <laughs> so the first part of this question, I guess, is why the, uh, the Gambrel truss versus just a simple pitched roof? And uh, pretty easy answer to that question. We have this barn on the property already which has that style of roof. And one of Lindsay's only requirements on this was that it looks like a barn and it looks like the barn is already here. So therefore, <laughs> it's gonna get the exact same roof style. So with this, you have the, uh, the option of making a second story up in here in the trusses. So essentially where this, uh, this vertical piece is here across to here and back up again, this could be carved out into a big kind of rectangle area all the way down, and that could be a second story loft uh, area. So I, we did look into that because I'm like, oh, that'd be kind of nice to have some more space up there and all that. So a couple of things to consider with that is if you're actually going to do that, you're starting to look at a truss spacing significantly closer together, like two feet on center. So uh, that'd be three more trusses for every bay here. So you do have a really good amount of cost that goes, goes into adding that up there. And the other thing with that too, is even if you do that, the loading that that actually gives you for that space, I, I couldn't really justify spending the money for not a whole lot of like, I don't know what I would do with the space because you, I can't put slabs up there. I can't put lumber up there. I can't put anything heavy up there. So it's really just like, lightweight storage area maybe like if you wanted an office you could put that up there or something so i, I just couldn't justify the added cost uh, another one we looked at too was having that space but you would have an intermediate post that takes this load straight down to the floor so then you lose the clear open 40 foot span because you have a post uh was it like eight or ten feet in from the sidewalls or something so i wasn't too keen on that 
So for, was it, I think it was like 30 or, I think it was like 30 grand more, which I just couldn't justify spending that money on a space that wouldn't really be all that useful for me. When I had a little better idea of what would actually be useful would be to do a, uh, a not put a lid on here and just insulate all the way up around through here and all the way back down. So as you're in here, you have full access to basically up until the roof. So from the middle of the floor to the peak, about 28 feet of headspace, which I think is gonna be more useful for this space, being more of a flex space, being a little more of whatever. I can put everything you would hang from the ceiling up into the truss system. So I have, I can maintain 14 foot clear height all the way through here. Another thing I can do is if I do a pallet rack in here, I can go up into the trusses a little bit and get a little more height. If I put a pallet rack going this way up against one of the trusses, I can get my mast on my forklift all the way up into there and still be able to put stuff on pallets or on pallet racks up into the truss. So if I ever wanted to put a rack, I guess, perpendicular to the wall, I would have even more height available to me as well. But in the ceiling, I can put fans, I can put air scrubbers, I can put all the duct work for the dust collection up into the ceiling so none of it's hanging down into the actual usable space. So just for me and my use case with the space, I thought just having it completely open and not spending the money on that extra space above that I didn't know what I would do with, this would be more useful. And again, if I want to stand something up, like in the middle of this, this building right here, if I'm standing right here, and for whatever reason I want to stand something up that's 20 feet tall, I can do that. I have a 14 foot head height, but I can go up into the trusses. So I just think it's going to be more flexible for my intended use of the building, and that's why. So there's kind of what it would look like standing in here looking up. Uh, just if this, if the, uh, the bottom of the tin was painted blue, <laughs> this is what it would look like. So another great day of uh, progress. Again, like at this stage, things happen real quick and there's like noticeable, measurable changes by the day, which is, uh, it's nice. It definitely helps uh, stay motivated. So tomorrow uh, we're gonna be finishing up the purlins for sure. That's probably what I'll be doing tomorrow. And uh, I think they might put the, uh, the window frames and door frame in as well and probably start getting ready to get this end wall uh, on here as well. So plenty of, plenty of framing still to do, but uh, we're getting there. <laughs> so that is, uh, that's going to do it for today. Thank you, as always, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments or a name suggestion for the building, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.